Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I had a simple request and I figured I would try to actually record this request. The request was, while spinning this, um, how much voltage could I put into a capacitor? Yeah. Let me show you what I got set up here. And I got the two inch magnet inside this coil. The coils are hooked in series and I'm gonna just be spinning it by hand seeing what we can generate. So, two inch magnet inside this big coil. Just like I had it on the last couple of videos where I showed you this rig inside here. So I've got some microwave oven diodes. Uh, made a four wave bridge rectifier. And then I have a .85 UF capacitor at 2000 volts DC. Um, the circuit diagram looks like this. So you've just got the coil, four way bridge and the cap. Um, so I'm gonna show you what kind of resistance I get without the four way bridge first. And then we'll add the four way bridge. And then once we get it charged, we'll dump it back into the coil and see what happens. So the purple, we're not using the yellow. The purple's kind of hard to see, but you should be able to see it. The purple is the voltage on the capacitor. Again, this test is with no diodes. So the coil is connected straight to the capacitor, and it's going to charge positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. The green and blue are both on the coil. Um, the blue is the current that's on the capacitor side. The green is actually connected between the two sets of coils. So I have two sets of coils, same length, same resistance, but different turns. So here we go. Let's see what happens. So you can see the current. Oh, I should probably flip this guy to five milliamps. I'll do it again for you. I cut the bottom off there. So you can see um, this higher is right where the magnet's spinning, getting some momentum, and then it's dragging me down because the coil's almost shorted across that cap. So um, the voltage here, right, we'll just do one half, so the max. So it's about 600 and, what is that, 52, 55, 655 volts positive, um, and then about the same negative, I'm sure. So. There you go. Now, we're going to charge this thing with the diodes and we can get an actual reference. Let me show you what it is mechanically so you can actually see what I'm doing when I'm spinning this thing. Okay, I wanted to show you what this looked like. I'm just pulling the belt. You can see once it gets past center, it's literally swinging past because there's no induced voltage. It gets a little momentum and then kind of jumps back. There's a little flywheel on this side, so there's a little bit of extra mass and inertia going on here. So now, we are going to put the full wave bridge on there. Alright, so I have the full wave bridge connected. What I want to show you is when I pull this, at first it's going to have some resistance. And then once the voltage build up, uh, builds up on the cap, it's pretty well, the resistance pretty well goes away. So you'll see how it jump, 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 and then it smooths out. So here we go. And see now it's pretty well freewheeling. And the cap is very much charged. Let me show you what the scope looks like. I'm gonna spin it even faster just to show you. That's about that's about the max speed that I'm gonna spin it. Three thousand. Oh, that three thousand volts. All right, here we go. I'm gonna fire it up. I'm gonna do exactly what you saw mechanically there. There we go. So you can see when I first started pulling it, the current was more. All right, so this time we'll pause it. We're gonna discharge the cap slowly through a resistor here. And then what I'll do is, um, Richard's here. I'll have Richard stop the thing on the first couple of cycles and we'll look at the current. Cause I wanna kinda show you how much current is happening in the beginning versus towards the end, whenever the cap is more fully charged and the resistance is less. So Richard, uh, when it gets about here, you can stop it. Ready? That's good. Perfect. Okay, so what you see here, obviously, my max voltage right here is 2.37, and here it's zero. So obviously, the first couple of cycles are pulling or pushing a lot of current into the cap. And then over here, 
It's a lot easier to push, a lot less resistance, and uh, that's because our cap is charged. So now I'll try to go even higher and we'll see if it's lower than that. Here we go. So I was pulling it pretty hard. <laughs> We're up over 3000 volts and uh, now what I want to show you is discharging the capacitor into the coil and watch what happens to the uh, to the system. So 3,000 volts, that's pretty high, Richard. Pretty high. There we go. All right, so here we go. You can leave it, it doesn't matter. I want to see what it does. Oh yeah, okay. So now I'm going to take the capacitor voltage and dump it right on into the coil. Here we go. Jeez. Okay. So it uh, tried to rip the teeth off the belt there. I heard it. I'm sure some of my uh, set screws are now loose. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's all part of it. So there's what scope looks like when I discharge that guy. Was that the first discharge? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we went from 3,000, not quite all the way down to zero, and uh, produced quite a bit of current coming out of that thing so anyway just wanted to film this and demonstrate this as a request fulfilled god bless you guys have a good day read the bible more and uh yeah thanks richard <laughs> you're welcome sir <laughs> <laughs> all right see you later All right, so now the question is going to be asked, what happens when you open one of the ends of the coil? So instead of the coil being closed through the full-way bridge rectifier into the capacitor, okay, the coil in the middle, all right, so imagine this just being split down the middle, being coil one, coil two. I'm just gonna disconnect the center of the coil. So I'm literally Connecting it just like that. Open-ended coil. These two are tied together capacitively. Four-way bridge to a cap. Okay? So this right here is the center. And I'm just completely disconnecting it. So we're going to compare this, all right, and the resistance it takes and the voltage we can charge up to versus when it's shorted. So you guys can't tell how hard it is to pull, but I'll let you know. Alright, so here we go. Now I'm going to short the coil back out so it's connected um, exactly as it was at the beginning, beginning of this video. And here we go. So, the beginning here for me pulling it was much greater than it was with the other way around. We got a tiny bit more voltage um, because I pulled it a little harder because it was pulling back on me harder so it took a lot lot more torque according to the phalanges and the arm hair tells me that there's more effort to put into the system um, also I screwed up this is not one revolution each cycle is one so one two three four five we'll call it six revolutions so anyway these are pole passes um, so, anyway, just to demonstrate to you the difference there. So I'm going to pull up both of them on the screen so we can look at them together. Okay, so I've pulled them up together, and you can see they are pretty darn comparable. The only difference, really, is the fact that the amount of current needed to charge the capacitor with an open-ended coil compared to the needed amount to the closed coil um, is, is quite, quite a big difference, and um, you can see that by the width of the current pulse. Now, here's the thing that you got to remember. The green and the blue are on top of each other here, okay? And you can't even see the blue. It's behind it. If I try to pull it forward, now you can see it. 
Now earlier, right, the blue is on the capacitor side. So that's the one you saw. However, the green, which was connected on the loop, which we disconnected, was completely flatlined. Okay, so that's, that is the flat line. So if I turn this back off, you can see there's a flat line on there, right? Where if I turn the um, references off, okay, and I turn, there we go, and I turn the, these two back on, you can see I got current of identical sources on the loop and in the short, right? or the middle of the coil in this case. So if I turn the references back on, okay, you can see, all right, so that is the current on the outside. Um, I might be able to align it a little bit better, but it's going to be off a little bit. But you can see that there's no zero line there, okay? Now if I turn on the um, this one here, right, and I turn off this one, you can see, you can physically see there's a flat line all the way across there. So that flat line, because it's done. thank you Riley, that flat line, okay, is telling me that there is no current flowing through the open part of this coil. So it is literally an open circuit, right? Just like this. It's just a coil and a coil, just like that. These two are completely disconnected from each other. Massive. But there's, there's capacitive coupling here. However, in this case, there's just pure inductance in, in both sides of these. So anyway, bye-bye.